You are listening to the Gentleman Scofflaw Podcast. Listener beware. Rise and shine, the liquor store is open. I ain't got time for moping. I best be on my way. Well, I still got time to save my reputation. Time to go day drinking in this dirty little town. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Gentleman Scofflaw Podcast. And that intro music is quite the treat. Um, I am your host, Jordan Crowder, and with me in studio, as usual, is Donovan Fowler. And joining Hi, us Jordan. all all the way from the Great White North, you stepped on your intro, you jerk, is John G. Goodman. How are you guys doing? Uh, you well, know. very well. Uh, yeah, I'm tired. That's the thing. That's the thing is like whenever somebody asks me, how are you doing? I want to say good. And then I and then I double think myself because of third grade English. And You're like, I am I doing well. good or am I doing well? Right. And is that true? Am I just putting on a face? What are they asking? Well? Physically, emotionally, uh, you know, because <sighs> it could be a bit of spiritually. It, yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, All right, I try to give. Them let's an let's do a little bit of housekeeping because the listeners want to know what the hell we're drinking and smoking. Mm-hmm. Do um, they, Jordan? So, do they? Well, you know what? Surprisingly enough, a lot of people in the iTunes reviews, which we will be reading uh, in the coming episodes, have said that. So I'm going to go ahead and say I'm smoking my Country Gentleman. I tend to smoke that a lot. Um, and I am smoking in it. I'm smoking. You know what blend I'm smoking, guys? Uh, I'm sp- morning. I'm smoking, smoking. What, what blend I'm smoking? smoking a blend that was designed for Danny K by uh, Kramer's uh, Pipe Shop in Beverly Hills. It was a custom blend for Danny Kay. It's called Danny Kay's Blend. I've wanted to make it over there so many times. Actually, well, just since you told me about it like a couple weeks ago, but um, I'm excited, man. I hear it's uh, it's an institution. It's it like, is. Yeah. It's a really cool spot. It's like a little, little place in Beverly Hills. The daughter of the original owner um, still runs it. And it's like an English blend with a little bit of like an Irish kind of uh, Is she whiskey. <laughs> 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 yes, she's single and married and much older than you um, by probably twice your age. I'm not picky. <laughs> Even more. <laughs> um, that smells good. That actually yeah, uh, it smells good. That has a very uh, yeah. it's very and pungent. Drink- yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and then I'm I'm drinking some. Uh, you actually gave me this to my birthday. This is probably the last of it. It's the Bullen uh, uh, Bourbon, the ten year age bourbon. It's actually really delicious. I did. Yeah, I, I went to. I remember I went to Bevmo before your birthday. I was in a rush, and I thought, you know, I'll just. I don't really like this guy that much. I'll just get him a a Bullet Bourbon uh, bottle. And then the guy who, in the red shirt came over and was like, he was like, "How much do you really like this guy?" I was like. He's he's okay. He's like, <laughs> uh, you should go with the fifty year old. Uh, you know, is is it fifty years <laughs> no, old or something? Ten, it's ten years. Uh, fifty hey. year old, you would have you would have bought a glass of gold. It probably would have <laughs> it probably would have cost you uh, the national it debt. It shows. Uh, I grew up drinking uh, drinking jet fuel, so you know, I, <laughs> I, I have no taste for anything anymore. And what do you got there in your in your glass and your? Uh, there, Donovan. Oh, uh, I have uh, Finlagen. Finlagen. Uh, single malt scotch. Scotch. This stuff is good. Uh, like it is very good. Campfire in a glass. Yeah, it is a campfire in a glass. It makes my uh, makes my nostrils tingle when I just mm-hmm. put my nose in there. So it's uh, it's quite good. And from what I hear, I have yet to buy a bottle for myself because I've been uh, living off yours. Uh, but I hear it's quite cheap too. Yeah, it's not that you can go to Trader Joe's, which we should get Trader Joe's as a sponsor. How uh, many times we mentioned on the show? We really should at this point. And John, what do you have? I have lime water. Oh, there you go. Well, yeah. <laughs> whatever floats your boat. It's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, we actually have some pretty cool guests coming later. Um, we're actually going to call this, I think we're going to call this, we're going to title this in iTunes, the shaving, shaving episode. episode. The Or I should, maybe the wet shaving episode. A close uh, wet shave. Yeah, because we, we have uh, Douglas Smythe and Smythe. Matt Pisarsik, and together they have... Uh, a series called I'd Lather Be Shaving. Uh, Doug is a soap maker, and Matt 
owns uh, Razor Emporium, they restore old uh, safety razors. So together they put on this big thing every year called the Big Shave West, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow, and we're going to be there. We've got a table. We're going to be podcasting live there. So if you're in the greater L.A. area, come and join us. It'll be a lot of fun. I'll be able to uh, try out all my shaving puns. On those who are visiting, like, uh, like, all right, let's hear one. Like, uh, let's put you on the spot. <laughs> well, this one, this one I saw in a Sean Connery meme, so I kind of have to do the accent, but okay. it's, uh, I must ask you a question. Oh. I'm saving it for later. <laughs> <laughs> it's appropriate because you got a mustache this week, which true. the listeners, uh, you, can't see. You know but. what? You should really just call this the mustache episode. Cause, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. and, and Doug Smythe too had, I mean, he got his start making a website called how to grow a he, mustache. He has a very good mustache. My mustache does not, uh, hold up to Smythe's at all, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to get in touch with my inner Selic, so your inner Selic. Yeah, you've got a good well, start, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's not bad. So, John, what's uh, what what happened in your week this week? Anything interesting? You know, I was thinking about that today, and I didn't really have anything too interesting to talk about. Then on my way home, it's like five thirty in the afternoon. I'm passing uh, a corner in my neighborhood where they demolished a building recently, so it's just rubble everywhere. But they left the sign, like, you know, uh, you'd see a sign outside a, a strip mall. Yeah. But it's all beaten up, it's got holes in it, and it's got a family of pigeons living inside. And I look across the street, there's this old guy, he looks like he's maybe mid-70s with a walker, pajama pants, uh, a wife beater all <laughs> yellowed and stained. And he's just standing there staring at the pigeons with this big smile on his face. And all I could think was... I hope one day I could find that level of happiness. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, I was I was waiting for this this guy to be the same guy from your homeless guy story. <laughs> <laughs> no, he was. This was a you know another classic people all together. Sounds like sounds like you got a a, a classic uh, generation of characters wandering around your, Yo. <laughs> your town. Yeah, just rolling around. Yeah, all of them are uh, very interesting. Some of them are kind of scary. Yeah, and some of them are litter bugs. Uh, well, how about you, Donovan? How was your week? Anything um, interesting happen? Uh, well, I went home and uh, had some good times there. Back to Kansas City. Oh yeah, uh, good barbecue. Um, you know, I actually will not go to many of the old Kansas City joints, uh, barbecue joints anymore, just because my dad's barbecue has gotten so good. Oh wow, he's like he's really good at uh, smoked pulled pork. It's oh, just, really jeez. Uh, you get off a plane and you taste some of that, and you're like, "I'm staying." But uh, get a room, Donovan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, good barbecue. May as well put a ring on it. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where that was going. Uh, <laughs> but uh, anyways, um, what else? Oh, no. what, what else happened? John's having an asthma attack. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, John. <laughs> Gosh, I thought it would have been the pipe tobacco, but apparently it's my corny jokes. <laughs> uh, anyways, but uh, other than that, um, I guess uh, in the Fowler family uh, realm of things, uh, my sister is uh, going to be having a, a little visitor in nine months. Oh, yeah. well, congratulations. Santa? You're going to be an uncle. Uh, a little. <laughs> <laughs> Both Santa? Um, but... Uh, but yeah, a, a, a little sha- a little shaver, a little. As, as they used to say back in the day. A they used shaver. to call you know that's something in movies. I used to see they used to call kids little shavers. I don't know why. It, doesn't, it sounds kind of derogatory. Uh, probably was. well. I mean, you know, people <laughs> people didn't like kids back in the day. You know, it's, it's a new thing that you yeah. post your Facebook photos of all your kids. In the old days, it would have been like get that on my face. Yeah, book. Oh, all right. <laughs> Enough with these puns, Donovan. Enough with these puns. He that would pun would pick a pocket. Well, to you, quote, Master you, and Commander. You know what it's time for? It's time to read. It's time what to, time is it? It's time to read some sweet tweets. Listener mail. But this is a segment of the show where we go to listener feedback, and we get it in tons of different ways. You can leave it on Facebook. You can send us an email. You could send us a voicemail, a recorded voicemail. You can leave feedback on iTunes, and uh, you you may get it read on the show. And if you do get it read on the show, I'm going to send you a sticker. 
We got some new stickers that I'm going to send. Mm, those people. stickers are pretty yeah. sweet. So uh, with the gentleman, with Scofflaw himself on the sticker from the logo. So today we have, uh, John, you want to read that first tweet for us? All right. We got one from Jeremy S. Zare. He says, oh. been listening to and enjoying Gent Scofflaw the last few weeks. Manly stuff without pretense. Well, that's that's a nice well, thank you, Jeremy. Nice review. Thank you, Jeremy. We try. Um, we 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 tr- we pretend uh, not to be pretentious. We just be. We, dro- we drop all pretenses. <laughs> <laughs> all right. What's that next one there, Donovan? Uh, this one is from Mike Anderson. It says, "I've been thoroughly impressed with the first three episodes of At Gent Scofflaw Podcast. <laughs> Looking forward to listening to this week's." It's always weird when you read things that are meant for Twitter. In a real, uh, but that thank you, Mike. That's a, that's a well, great thing, especially when you're uh, when you're twilliterate like I am. <laughs> I mean, I, I I made that up myself. Um, coin term my, hashtag, hashtag twilliterate, hashtag everyone. Twilliterate, if you can pronounce it three times while drunk. But uh, but yeah, my my roommate will, uh, who's very apt at social media, he will hold up a tweet or an Instagram post for me to read, and it takes me at least three minutes. To figure out what people are saying, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm I'm very, and that is why he doesn't have a Twitter account and people are, <laughs> can't follow him. Um, and then our, oh, we got another one here from John Bush. I wonder if he's related to one of the presidents. Um, he's, he's probably like the uh, the cousin that they kept in the <laughs> kept in the closet. <laughs> he says, "I think," uh, and I won't read the at gent scoff law. I'll read what it's supposed to mean. It says, "I think the gentleman scoff law last." <laughs> Wow, wow, way to, way to just, <laughs> why didn't you tell us that before? Uh, I, I think, yeah, talk about pretenses being dropped. I'm not going to read this. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say what I should actually no, say. No, no I'll, re- I'll read it as, as written. I think at Gent Scofflaw is going to be my new road trip podcast, which that sounds like a good idea. That would be a good idea. My, yeah. Especially if you could smoke your pipe on the road while driving. Oh, I've done it. I've done it too. I've packed my pipe on the road while driving. Well, that's just dangerous, and we would not suggest bringing a <laughs> flask on the road. <laughs> well, you know, depends on what road you're on. A road you're on the Fury Road, then you know, maybe. Oh, anything goes but, on that road. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. You can, <laughs> can you imagine you that can... movie if they had used Mel like they were uh, going to from when they started planning it? It wait, would be, wait, 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 wait. I don't know the story of this. Who, Mel was supposed to be who? Well, no, Mel is Mad Max. So, Oh, we're you, talking about Mad Max. We're talking about Mad Max. For some Max, reason, Fury I thought Road. we were talking about Fury. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> Gosh. We can. We can. <laughs> and I was thinking, Jordan, wait, Mel you, Gibson was you supposed and to I be have the Brad to sit, Pitt character? Okay, now we're going to have to sit down. We're going to have to watch both beyond Thunderdome <laughs> at some point. But, um, but no, uh, yeah, uh, Mel Gibson... Uh, is Mad Max and uh, Tom Hardy is a very good Mad Max. He but is. Mel he is did sort a great of the job. Mad Max. So, but yeah, it was uh, actually the story behind that. Not to get too off, too far off the Fury Road, but um, I guess they uh, they were going to do the sequel back in two thousand, and uh, they were super pumped to do it, and they had the story and stuff all lined out, and then uh, things got delayed a bit. And then they were going to do it in 2003, and then the Iraq War started, so they couldn't go to the locations that they wanted to, which I suppose were in the Middle East, or they were just traveling wise. It would have been hard. And then, uh, and then Mel ran into his troubles in uh, 2006. What troubles? What troubles are you talking about? Uh, you know, uh, going 80 on the Pacific Coast <laughs> Highway with a bottle of tequila, tequila in you, and then everything else kind of falls Don't out speed, from there. Don't speed, guys. Speeding yeah, is a yeah. killer. Yeah, no flasks on the road, but that that that's the real Fury Road. Mel was living it, but uh, but yeah, and then uh, and then I guess uh, he he just you know he got he got old and uh, you know. But I, I think that's him. what could have been really awesome. Like uh, like imagine if Pierce Brosnan came back for another James Bond. How cool yeah, would that yeah. be? It yeah. would be pretty cool. Although I don't think anybody wants to see a guy that old uh, hitting on chicks. <laughs> he doesn't hit on. Oh oh, oh I see I see Pierce Brosnan. <laughs> yeah. Hitting on chicks. You know, yeah. you know, speaking of Pierce Brosnan, um, you know what's a great movie of his? It's one of my favorites, and I don't think a lot of people have seal. seen it. Grey Owl. 
No, no. It's <laughs> <laughs> points no, points no. to those in the YouTube comments section if you can figure Which that out. Which that was shot in, I think, I believe it was shot in Montreal. I had some it was. Sir Richard there. Attenborough was up here. I was actually near the set when they were filming. Wow. Well, good for you. Yeah. Uh, and why did you, you walk on and say, what is this, Dances with Wolves? <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, the Manador... I don't know if you've seen this. It's with um, uh, what's his name? Uh, why can't I? Greg Kinnear? Yeah, I and, and he has a mustache in that, right? Yeah, and he's yeah. like this hitman that's like this lonely guy looking for a friend over. At, I don't remember if it was Mexico or Spain. Yeah, I think uh, I feel like it was probably it was Mexico. Mexico. Yeah, yeah. maybe um, Spain. But it's it's just a it's just Spain. a totally different character for him. He's just like this like it's different from the kind of high class, sophisticated you know people he plays like in in James Bond or Thomas Crown Affair or yeah. that kind of stuff. And he's just this total, <laughs> this total wreck in this movie. And he just like. Like, it's great to see him in that role because it's totally different than what you'd expect. And it's a really funny movie. It's nice to see, uh, you know, Pierce go outside his, you know, usual bounds. Uh, yeah. And, like, you know, I feel like, uh, what was the movie I was thinking of that he did that in? Oh, shoot. Oh, yeah, uh, Ghost Rider. Not Ghost Rider <laughs> in Nick Cage, but Ghost Rider. Wait, are you talking about the 90s TV show? No. Where kids solve crimes with a go- help of a ghost who writes in their notebook? No. I have no knowledge of that, and that's you, not a real thing. Do you thing. not remember this? this I remember John? that. You remember? Sounds lame. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, disqualified. Ghost. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, no, it's the one with uh, Ewan McGregor, directed by the uh, child molester, uh, Roman Polanski. Uh but yeah, <laughs> I like how you just. Can, I like we know exactly where you line up on it because people in Hollywood they totally. I just ignore okay, the I just thing. remember. I no, oh my gosh, they do. It's the worst. It's like it's like uh, God. Come on, guys. Like he molested a a kid. <laughs> like it's not that hard. He may be a good director, but I don't think we give a free pass for that. But uh, no, I remember my dad when uh we were watching the Oscars and it was the year the pianist came out. Have fun with that one. And uh, he uh, and uh, uh, Rome Plansky won for best director. And uh, my dad just exploded. He was like a child molester. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, I was like, what? What? What's this? Have you heard about this? I know. Um, How come we're not hearing about his male privilege? Yeah. Right. Seriously. <laughs> uh, but anyways, uh, getting back on track. Ghost Rider uh, movie with Ewan McGregor and uh, Pierce Brosnan plays like a uh, version of Tony Blair. He's not supposed to be Tony Blair, but I think he. He's like, it's like a hybrid of the Clintons and the Blairs. It's kind of like in Love Actually when Hugh Grant <laughs> and uh, Billy oh, Bob yeah. Thornton. Yeah, that's the lighter version of it, <laughs> without all the murder and intrigue. But uh, but yeah, it's a it's a good it's a good cast that movie. I mean, uh, Polanski can direct, but it's it's hard to watch. I'll stick with Gray Owl. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but folks, stay stick stick to Gray Owl and mm. Remington Steel. All right, guys, and that, um, we got way off on the rabbit trail, but that's all right. That's what this show's about, but that's what we call Listener Mail. All right, guys, I'm really excited to have these guys on our show with us guys, and today we've got uh, today we've got Douglas Smythe and Matt Pasarsik. I hope I said that right. Yes, you did. <laughs> and um, they have a, a, a show called I'd Lather Be Shaving, and they're also, uh, I guess, what would you say, founders uh, or, or you know, uh, guys that put on the show at the Big Shave West? Oh, yeah, I'm the organizer, uh, well, organizer. one of the organizers of the Big Shave West. Yeah, which is, um, for listeners who don't know, it's kind of like the Comic-Con of men's grooming. Is that right? I don't know. That's all I can... Wet shaving. Wet shaving more than... It's like, it's like a subcategory of... Grooming, Sub- so it's, subcategory. Yeah. Traditional shaving. shaving. That's pretty awesome. What Now, could you tell me about how did how did that get started? Like, how did that come about? The Big Shave West? Yeah. The Big Shave West, I mean, I wasn't as involved as Douglas, but I have been there since the beginning, uh, first meeting... Uh, I think basically people wanted to get together and relate with each other. If you're, you know, into the same thing, like if you're into wet shaving or like you said, comic books, there's that, in, you know, inherent need to kind of want to congregate and, and chat and talk. And I think finally someone put a good one on where they said, Hey, we're going to have it at this really cool shaving store in the heart of downtown Pasadena. 
And it's, it's not going to be like a stuffy conference where you're at a booth and a table and you have to have a pass to go through it. It's more just a place to hang out, meet up with guys maybe you had met on Facebook or met on a chat room, so, you know, buy some cool gear, check out what's new, you know, have a good time, kind of break down the barrier that exists in the, in the digital world today where you may know someone from Facebook, but you never actually met them. Yeah. Yeah. That's really cool. And I, a lot of people aren't really familiar with the idea of wet shaving. And I discovered <laughs> it's, it's funny. Cause like, um, I even told my brother who also uses a safety razor is like, Hey, I'm going to this thing called the big shave West and t- told him about it. He's like, there's a thing just for shaving. And like, even him <laughs> as a wet shaver, like to himself yeah. thought that was weird. And, um, there's like this entire community behind people that are a real fan of just these traditional methods of shaving. Um, I fell upon it by just cartridge razors were getting too expensive. I could no longer buy the generic cartridges for the the Gillette sensor, which I used to use, which right. still used to chew up my face, and that was the best thing I had. And so it was kind of it came out of a necessity. Like I need to find a way, a cheap way to do this, and that's how I discovered. Uh, I think through the art of manliness, which I ended up doing videos for them later on. Uh, Bill, on how to, how when to, God spoke to you in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, when God spoke to me in the bathroom. So that's that's how I um, discovered. How did you guys discover wet shaving? I know everyone has their kind of own story and there's different variants of it, but how about you guys? Well, before we even move on to that, if people want to know more about the Big Shave West, we did a documentary on the whole thing last year called, and they can find it at The Heart of Shaving. Theheartofshaving.com. Yeah, yeah, that was really that great was, too. I watched that before before uh, uh, talking okay. to you. Yeah. <laughs> Good, yeah, that, that just breaks down the whole thing. Yeah, and it doesn't. After you see that, you realize, okay, it doesn't sound that nuts anymore. <laughs> no, it doesn't. <laughs> it's really Let's a neat shave. little documentary. Yeah, thank, you. thank you, thank you. That was Matt and his crew that really uh, pretty much the crew that does. I'd rather be shaving our. our put that together. And, oh, that's uh, awesome. We're very happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> but how did we come to wet shaving? Okay, wet shaving for me. Uh, well, my dad did it growing up. I used to watch him. Uh, I'd stand on the little like stool that I used to, used to brush my teeth with as a child and watch him on the weekends wet shave with uh, a razor that he inherited from, I think, his father. And that's what turned me on to it. But then I, you know, I grew up. I kind of grew away from that. I forgot, about, forgot all about it, to be perfectly honest. And I got the, the mock whatever at the time. when I'm, On my 18th birthday, it was sent to me. As it is for most of us, if you uh, register with like the civil service, I think that's where it comes from. They send you a razor. <laughs> <Charged> licenses, man. <laughs> it's weird. And um, <laughs> got that, and I was using that for a long time. And eventually started moving over. I started hanging out in health food stores because that's where you meet the chicks. No, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what brought me to health food store. It was probably a woman. But um, I picked up the soap and the brush again, and I was like, oh, yeah, I remember this. And so I started with the soap and the brush later in life, and then eventually – got hit to uh, using a safety razor again. My dad gifted me his when I was younger, still had it and started using that. And it all clicked. It all made sense. It's like, yeah, you know, why did they overcomplicate this with the cartridge razor? I know exactly why. You know, yeah, we, we know exactly why. The more on that, I'd rather be shaving. But, um, yeah. Well, Sorry. Matt is kind of the, I, I, I guess you're kind of like the uh, the historian on all things safety yes. razors. Like for the listeners, uh, Matt also has uh, the Razor Emporium, which they actually take vintage razors and make them like new. I actually have one of them, and it's one of my favorite razors. And it's it's crazy to see that like these things, some of these things are like, Mine is at least sixty years old. I don't. I don't know how old, how far it goes. But you know, why? Why did we get away from that? That seemed like it was just such a good system before. Why has it become so bastardized over the years? Oh. Well, Jordan, uh, <laughs> thank you for the introduction. And um, uh, it's gotten that way for money. There's no other reason about it. I mean, Gillette was started in 1903, 1904, and they went into business to make money, and they made a lot of money, but the only thing that protected them was intellectual properties, uh, patents, you know, on their designs. Yeah. And the moment that their patents were threatened at every single juncture, that was when a, a design change happened. So the very first design change happened in 1920 because their their 17-year patent that was issued in 1903 expired. was expiring. Yeah, so... Oh, wow. They made a design change. And then again, they had to make another, another design change in the 30s. And the, I mean, just literally almost by decade, 40s. And what had happened was they kept on improving the double-edged blade. They kept on saying, okay, well, now it's thinner. 
Now it's coated, you know, coated with steel. Now it's uh, coated with Teflon. Now it's coated with platinum. Unicorn tears. Yeah. yeah. Now it's stainless <laughs> steel. Now it's you know platinum steel. I mean, they kept on improving it, and finally they came to a crossroads where, and this is the same thing that happens with golf clubs or anything. It looks the same, but they keep on getting patents. They have to come up with an improvement. If you can't show an improvement, the U.S. Patent Trade Office won't issue you a patent. And so they finally couldn't say there was any more improvements anymore with double-edged blades. Meanwhile, third-party makers are coming in, undercutting their profits, making just the cheap, off-the-shelf double-edged blades. Gillette's sitting here with all this overhead, all this machining equipment, all this staff and salespeople, and they said, we have to have something different. So they said, okay, let's take these two blades, you know, there's this, there's this one blade that has two edges on it. We'll take these two edges and we'll put them on a piece of plastic it's molded, and this will basically set all of our competitors back to the Stone Age. It, <laughs> all of their equipment that they've had for decades will all be null and void, and now we'll have a whole new series of patents, and they're going to be racing to catch up. And that's actually when Gillette went from a multi-million dollar business to a multi-billion dollar business. Yeah. Yeah. was wow. once they really got the cartridge thing going, and that was in the late 60s, early 70s. And they've been rolling with it ever since. And the same thing happened. It went from two, like you said, sensor. I used that too. Sensor yeah. to Mach 3, Mach 3 to the Fusion. Fusion now is Fusion Ball. I mean, there's <laughs> vibrating fusion. So it, it's Which always, is not a new concept. By the way. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. always the game is to make money off the blades. I mean, it just so happens that the old ones worked really well. Yeah. Well, and better. Yeah. And I remember like when I was when I was a kid, like just starting to shave. I, I looked at a lot of like the like for example like the new thing on the block was the fusion the vibrating fusion. Yeah. I just remember thinking there's no way that this is actually like a scientific thing <laughs> that it, like because <laughs> they had the commercial where it stimulates your you know the the follicles on your face and you all just feel stuff. dirty after using it. Like, I know it's true. Yeah, <laughs> just so I just I took, a little. <laughs> yeah, so. So I went the, with, the, with the regular one, but yeah, you're right. Like now it's the, um, like, you know, contouring the edges of your face and everything. It's like on a pivot and, uh, it's just, it, I, I look at it and I'm just like, it's not that complicated. You know? <laughs> I mean, let just announced a corporate mandate and this is just a few weeks old. Their entire price structure is going down by 25% across every product they make. So that means that you go to the grocery store, you're going to see blades going down in price you know, 20, 25%. And that's huge because that tells me as someone who's watched this market for 10 years, that they are basically pricing themselves out of their own market, <laughs> that people are fed up. And that's why you see companies like Harry's dollar shave, dollar shave yeah. club. They've just got bought out by Unilever for a billion dollars. Oh, wow. Um, you see this, this whole trend of other people trying to fight to get into the big, the big boys club. And now double edge is always going to be a sub sub category, and I'm fine with that. It's always going to be, you know, a lower tier, maybe 10, 15 percent of the total shaving market. I'm completely cool with that. I'd rather be the big fish in a small pond than try to fight with Gillette. I mean, Harry's has got an uphill battle, but mm -hmm. people are gravitating towards them because it's offering a comparable product at a much more affordable price. And so Gillette's having to respond, and I they haven't ever had to face a competitor for decades. Yeah. You know? And it's insane. I actually just for fun the other day was at CVS, and I never, I almost, I never buy shaving products at, at at stores anymore. I'd get them all online, but I couldn't believe that it was forty five dollars for a set of of cartridge blades, and that's like, oh, yeah. I know that those are L A prices, but even twenty five percent off of that is too damn you don't even expensive. Get a bag in L A when you buy them. Too. Yeah, it's you like don't. They don't give you a bag. <laughs> <laughs> it's 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 really insane. I don't know. It's um. And that's so, that's the number one reason. So Jordan, your first question was how'd you get into it? Yeah, I got into the same way you did. I was trying to use a sensor Mach three, and it was not only causing like irritation problems with my neck, but I was also in college, and I was like, this is expensive. I'd rather be buying beer and not be you know spending a bunch of money. And so I literally went to an antique store. I was like, how did people used to shave? And this really cool guy kind of took me in. He's like, hey, man, let me show you. There's this old double-edged razor thing. And I figured, let's try it out. I just so happened to buy a bunch of old Gillettes, and then that got me started with yes. how do I fix these, how yeah. do I restore these? And I realized no one else was doing it, so I just started doing it. Wow. Yeah. 
That's insane. You became you you became kind of like the the was it the Bubba Gump of uh, of, of Razors. When I watch your shows, I'm like, oh, he knows every name, what year they're made, you know, what they're called. Like, it's crazy how much you know about about all these about all these things. Um, and then, so you, um, uh, Douglas, you ended up um, making you have your own soap and and shaving product line. How did you get into that? Yes, I, I consider myself a wet shaving software and hardware developer. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great on a business card. No one knows what the hell it means. Um, <laughs> yes, I. Well, how I came to that is at the time. Uh, this is probably about five years ago now. I'm, I'm I'm a bay rum freak. You know, I absolutely love bay rum. Like that's my scent. I was really addicted to Burt's Bay Rum, which was around in like the early 2000s. It's been discontinued since. Mm. But like that was my like signature like scent. Like I'd show up at work and people knew I was there before they saw me because I could smell the bay <laughs> rum. So I just wanted to create this whole other like I couldn't find a soap, is what it all comes down to, like a matching soap, be it a body mm. soap and a shave soap in that same bay rum scent. No one was doing bay rum back then. And if they were, I couldn't find it. Uh, this is before the artisan shaving soap world really exploded. So I ended up tooling around with that. My girlfriend uh, was a soap maker, experimenting with soaps and whatnot. Um so she was teaching me hot process. I studied cold process soap making in college. Uh, I took two courses on it. Pretty much it was either that or rollerblading for the easy credits. <laughs> I'm glad I took the soap making classes, however. And um, yeah, I, I got into that and I just wanted to create the soap myself. And I sent it off. I was, you know, I had a blog at the time. I still do called howtogrowmustache.com. And uh, that was pretty much my baby. And I wanted, to, I wanted to sell a product that would bring people back to my site. Uh, so I created the mustache wax. In that time, however, I was studying soap making. I wanted to like make the best soap. I was having friends from all over the country send me water samples. I wanted to create a soap that would like explode with lather, no matter what the water quality was, because water quality will, you know, if it's high, it has a lot of minerals in it, it's hard water, it will affect the lather. So I was just experimenting with this soap, um, this bay rum scented soap, and I also introduced like this large format tin. It was like this five inches across. I had a lot of things I was working on. I had a waterproof notebook in my shower, and uh, I was just got really nuts with it. But it wasn't Sounds for like Kramer. It, it, yeah, it was, it was absolutely. <laughs> I was having a breakdown, and maybe I was. But um, I was just doing it for myself. Finally, created the soap. I was writing for uh, the Sharpologist also, which is Mantic Fifty Nine's blog. Oh yeah, yeah. I've been and so I sent him uh, a tin of it, and I sent Leisure Guy Michael Ham, who wrote the book on wet shaving. Um, Leisure Guys, Leisure Guys Guide to it's Gourmet great. Shaving, uh, which is a great book for. Um, for all you grads and dads out there this time of year. I always but, um, see it on recommended things when I check out with my stuff on Amazon, so I should oh, probably pick it up book. one of these days. <laughs> if you're interested in wet shaving, you should pick it up. But regardless, I sent him a, uh, a copy of myself. I sent him uh, one of my pucks, and I sent one to Mantic, and they both asked, like, well, when is it going to be for sale? And I was like, it's not going to be for sale. I made it for me. I was sharing it with you guys. They're like, no, you need to sell this, because they'd never seen anything so large before. It was in a large tin, like a yeah. CD-sized tin, and um, it just and the, the way it performed, they were just amazed by it. And so it got me thinking, like, well, I'm selling mustache wax to bring people back to my site. I might as well sell the soap. So I called the soap pretty much howtogrowmustache.com, yeah. synergy shape soap. But it was the name. It was howtogrowmustache.com. Who names a product a website? So I was <laughs> really just doing that, like, yeah, just to drive people back to the site. And it, it got caught on in all the different forums and on Reddit, and it exploded. And uh, suddenly I found myself making soap full on. Um, so, and it even outsold my girlfriend's soap at the time, which she was doing pedal pusher fancies. Uh, since then, we've combined forces under one roof uh, known as Phoenix Shaving. But that's pretty much how I got into it. It was totally by accident. I think a lot of these stories right now with people online, thanks to the Etsy world we live in, yeah. it's just it, it, it's always the same story. That's how it happened, purely by accident. It was a welcome accident, however, and uh, haven't looked back since. That's, that's crazy. Accident. And I've I, and I've tried some of the products that you sent me, and they're they're fantastic. I really love that um, the Sundown soap. Oh, thanks. That's what I was, and the aftershave is like, it's it's so it like it numbs your face of any sort of irritation afterwards. It's Uh, great, and I didn't get any bumps or anything. I mean, I I haven't gotten many bumps, uh, you know, since I've switched to wet wet shaving. But that was like that aftershave. I think that's what I'm going to be using from now on. All about the ingredients. (laughs) It's the alum in there. It's the aloe. I mean, it's actually. I don't try to think what I sent you. If it was the aftershave or the aftershave cologne, I make an aftershave aftershave cologne. cologne, Yeah. That uh, you know has the same face saving qualities of an aftershave, but with a staying power like a Barry White, so, so like a cologne. <laughs> uh, but I mean, it's loaded with like alum, um, glycerin, 
uh, aloe, all the different. It just it's all about the ingredients at the end of the day when it comes to an mm-hmm. aftershave. But yeah, and the reason why you're not getting uh, the bumps anymore is because you are de shaving. I mean, you shouldn't mm-hmm. be. It, I find most guys out there like I can't see the listeners right now, but raise your hand if you're driving or at work if you think you have sensitive skin. <laughs> and I guarantee nine out of ten guys raise their hand. And yeah. the thing is, it's possible that everyone has sensitive skin. The sensitive skin is caused by years of using cartridge razors and abusing your face. The yeah. first blade takes off the hair or lifts up the hair. The second blade cuts the hair. Third blade lifts up the hair. The second blade cuts. The, it li- keeps lifting and cutting to the point where the, the hair drops underneath the skin, and you're you're bound for trouble there. You're going to have an ingrown. You're going to have bumps. You're going to have razor burn. So. We all think in our mind that we have sensitive skin, but I'm telling you folks, you really don't have sensitive skin. Once you switch to DE shaving, you're only using one blade. Every time you drag a blade across your face, you're taking off a layer of skin. If you have six blades on a cartridge, you're taking off six layers with one pass. Whereas with a DE, you're only every time you drag it, it's just one pass. That's one layer. You know, so it's just so much better for your skin at the end of the day. Yeah. And uh, so I'm here today to tell you, you're not that sensitive, guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I I uh, I have curly hair, and so my problem was always the ingrown hairs and the bumps, and that that was just a pain in the butt. And and so the first thing, like you, Matt, uh, or or like I guess Doug, you said this. Um, I started with the brush, and that made the big. That made it. That was the thing that sold me. At first, awesome. I was a little bit iffy about the about the razor. I remember reading the Art of Manliness article, and was like, "That's that's a little silly. I don't know if I'm going to do that." And then, so once I I'd, I'd used the brush for a while, I was like, "I'm definitely going to try this other stuff." And uh, I mean, it's yeah. And, and yeah. I haven't. I've like my brother, my dad never shaved that way before. Like that's all he all he used were electrics or sensors uh, before. Yeah. When he taught yeah. me how to shave, he's like, "I'm going to show you how to shave." And it was a sensor, and it was like that f- Gillette foam uh, in the, in the can. It's mm-hmm. not even the bar yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it's it's crazy that you know these younger guys are actually teaching some older guys. They're it's dads amazing. Or- <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what's going on. But yeah, yeah the older generation they get caught up with the electric shaving. It was like cutting edge at the time. No pun intended. But I mean, it's like the guys that go out there and wait in line for the new iPhone or something like that. They were doing that for, you know, electric shavers back in the day and whatnot. A lot of guys started with those things. Well, electric razors used to suck. They they still do. As far as I'm concerned. I'm just saying that they used to be like really bad. And so like my grand, my grandfather, my dad, they kind of like upgraded over the years, almost like an old car computer. They're like, I got a good electric shaver now. Like, oh my gosh. Yeah. Terrible. (laughs) <laughs> I always thought electric shavers were like the last resort. Like I, I, yeah. I, I saw a movie. Have you once given up where, on life? <laughs> yeah, either that or you know, I saw a movie once where Humphrey Bogart. I think he like he spent a night out and he he didn't have enough time to go home, so he came back into his office and he had an electric shaver in his you know in his drawer that he used <laughs> to sort of freshen up. Uh, that was about sharper. it, you know. Product yeah, placement. yeah. <laughs> Early product exactly. placement. He was selling cigarettes and electric shavers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh man! And I, I remember when I had my first grown-up job out of college. I um, and I, I was doing air quotes. Um, um, but yeah, I had an electric shaver and I tried, sh- I was like, this is, I'm going to save all this time. I'm going to shave in the car on my commute oh, yeah, to work. Yeah. Bad idea. And it's it just, you get that crap all over your shirt and you it miss spots. And yeah. It was yeah. terrible, a terrible idea. Whoever invented it, but some guys, they still, <laughs> they use it. So I don't know. Yeah. I, maybe they, their, their face is like a catcher's mitt. They just don't feel anything. Uh, yeah, again, uh, it's, it's just. Sensitive skin. People are so convinced they have sensitive skin, they'll try all these other gadgets and whatnot. But it's really, it's not real. And by the way, Steve Martin is the guy who created the air quote, if you didn't know that. Oh, really? I did not know that. You're taking a Steve Martin's master's class. I actually am taking Steve Martin's master's class. (laughs) I am. (laughs) That's cool. (laughs) You know, that somehow doesn't surprise me because he is just so multi-talented that, you know. Yes, he is. They don't don't make him a kid anymore. Although, they do. I don't know. I just (laughs) <laughs> no, I mean uh, he's what was he? He's a writer. He's a comedian. He's a he's this is gonna come the this is gonna yeah, come the Steve Martin Martin show. podcast. He's amazing. Yeah. He's amazing. Well, all the comedians back then they they were multi talented. I mean, uh, John Belushi, you have yeah. like you know, so and so forth. They were so multi talented. Most of them seem to be musicians as well, um, and most of them were really high on cocaine. And uh, and I think that's part of the problem. Cocaine's right? <laughs> 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 okay, got a bad name. <laughs> <laughs> Bad rap. <laughs> <laughs> we do not do cocaine, people. We do not. <laughs> you guys, you guys <laughs> <are> <laughs> I mean, 
Charlie freaking Murphy died. Come yeah. on. Oh, yeah. oh man, yeah, I saw that. That was crazy. Mm. Although you didn't know who he was until he was on the uh, Dave Chappelle show. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It's true. He spent the last ten years living it up. He did. He did. God rest. Well, God rest his soul. Yeah. 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 Oh, what were we talking about? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, what's, want... what's the deal with straight razors? <laughs> well, it'll last what's forever. The deal with them? That's one investment that'll last generations. Yeah, yeah. so uh, earlier Jordan was saying, like, you know, oh, you know, Matt's restoring these razors that are 60 years old. Like, 60 years old is nothing. I mean, on the grand scheme of things, we've had we've had straight razors come through our shop from literally the Revolutionary War. Like, yeah, wow. 1700s, Civil War, 1800s. Not uncommon at all. We have one in our shop right now from the 1820s. Um, the really cool thing is it's a piece of steel. And like you said, what's the deal with it? The deal is you can literally use it your entire life and then your your kids, your parents. One-time investment. Yeah. But, I mean, what? it's just – it's, it's kind of like – I always tell people – it's like owning a manual transmission car. Like it's full on commitment. You do not get to have that, you know, that ride through traffic without knowing the entire time that you own a manual transmission vehicle. <laughs> it's the same thing with street racer. You are not going to have a quick shave. It's not going to be like a, hey, I'm just going to go in the bathroom and quickly get ready before I have to go out. Like you're looking at a 20 minute, 30 it's minute commitment. investment. It's commitment. Yeah. yeah. Plus then the ongoing commitment of sharpening it, stropping it every time, you know, owning it. I mean, that could be your thing. Oiling well. it, you know, so they're really cool, but it, it's, I always tell people double edge razors are like paddle shifting cars. It's kind of like halfway there. Yeah. Straight razors are main on transmission. Well, I almost feel like wet shaving is almost, it's kind of like making a cup of coffee by like getting some locally roasted beans, grinding yes. them yourself, you know, using the, the pour over or, a, or an arrow press or something compared to like getting something at McDonald's or a curry cup in the, in the uh, you know, the I would cup agree. thing. I would, because I, that has a connotation. So oh, I'm no. going to ask that. No, it's fine. I would say that, I would say I think that, you just offended Matt. No, no. 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 <laughs> See that like, I double edge razor shave, and yet I just I just buy coffee at the grocery store. I do grind yeah. it myself, but it's still just a coffee machine. But yeah. um, I would say it's more like the guy who likes good quality uh, brewed local brewed beer. Like if you're going to oh, go yeah. out and buy a six pack of beer for ten dollars, like when you could just buy Bud Light, you obviously want quality. A, yeah, you want quality. You want a better experience yeah. when drinking your beer. So I would say it's more like. Like the premium beer market, or that tea, makes sense. Too. or like someone who buys like <laughs> different teas and whatnot, aside from just black beer. tea or Tetley. But when I get the coffee, or this cigars, guy's out there <laughs> their own now, and so on and so forth, and mixing and blending, and it's yeah. just even the whole act of making a cup of coffee. There's something alchemical about it. You know, you got to mix a certain amount of sugar, a certain it's, amount it's of cream. It's a ritual. It's a process. Just, it's a ritual, which wet shaving is suddenly turns an everyday job of shaving into something that it's you can fun. actually yeah. it's meditative now you know and it sounds crazy hearing myself say that out loud but and the listeners are probably like what is he talking about but i'm telling you once you pick up the de razor and start doing it it's like time to yourself you can really pamper it's, it's just it's so much going on the different scents of soap you can buy you can mix and match you start thinking of things you've never thought of before and it's you can have suddenly have these conversations with other guys and it doesn't sound just like Ooh, what's he talking about? like mm. now you can talk about aftershaves or what colognes you use or shaving in general yeah you couldn't do that 10 years ago it's no. like i think i i in the documentary I, uh, somebody said i don't know if it was one of you two that said you take take a uh, something that you have to do and it's kind of become a hobby you turn it into oh, a it hobby. Is a hobby yeah yeah this is totally a hobby i mean yeah. you got guys who wait for payday and instead of saying oh i can't wait to buy that gun or i can't wait to buy that you know fancy new toy or whatever atv they're like, I'm gonna go buy this new soap or this expensive brush I want. Like, this new brush. This new brush. See, like, see, John's laughing because he hasn't done it yet. So we gotta get him on board. <laughs> I've, I've seen this before, and it's always fun to watch you guys because once you enter the rabbit hole, it's like boom, 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 boom. and we just. Laugh. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. But uh, it, once you once you have that moment, it's like, well, it'll click. But hold on, there's. I'm there's, anxious to get there. <laughs> you will. There, there's different levels of engagement, so. Ten years ago, when I got into this, I handed my brother Danny uh, a Gillette razor from the '60s, an old Gillette Fat Boy. I handed him a pack of blades. I handed him a soap and a brush, and that was it. 
He has never experimented any more than that. He doesn't go into chat rooms. He doesn't talk about shaving. If I go to his house, it's the same shit in his bathroom. He just occasionally he's like, "Hey, Matt, I'm out of blades. Can I get some more blades?" <laughs> That's great. Right. I mean, and, and he's an engineer. He just likes that it. it's cheaper. And he's like, "Yeah, it gives me a better shave." So, but he's yeah. not all into it. So there's different levels. Just like yeah. if you're into anything, there's different levels. Yeah. yeah. And what I like about it personally is I was always into antiques and like I collected coins and stamps growing up. And here I can now buy like a vintage red tip Gillette from 1955 that looks beautiful and still shaves as well as it did the day it came off the assembly line, you yeah. know, 75 years later. And it's, it's just, it's like, so it's, it, it, it hits, it, I don't know, tips, it's nostal- tips all it's nostalgic the, the triggers too. for me really. And mm-hmm. it's nostalgic. I mean, it's like, you know, what I liked about collecting coins and stamps and all that jazz is like, where has this been? Like the stories you could tell. And yeah. it's the same thing with this piece of history that you're sharing with now. And it's, you know, talk about the art of manliness. Like you now are experiencing exactly what they're experiencing or starting your day off with the same way that guys did back in the day when men were men mm-hmm. and so on and so forth. <laughs> Aaron Bay when Rum. Men wore hats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, didn't, didn't run around in their tennis shoes in the middle of the day. Yeah. Um, but Shorts yeah. <laughs> well, that's, it's interesting because it might, I don't, it it's it seems like it's very unique to that kind of antique a razor especially these old Gillette razors that you could actually use them and handle them and that they're not like this dainty little thing that you have to worry about breaking you could just use it the, like the came the day it came out one of the things i've always said is that you know if you have experienced the loss of a grandparent like you go through their house you can't wear their glasses. You can't wear their belt. Their shirts don't fit. Their pants are out of style. But their razor is one of these we or like maybe a lighter, like a Zippo lighter. I have my grandfather's Zippo lighter. Yeah. Like what other things from the past generations even still translate? And some things are timeless, and this is one of them. Yeah. And I think that's why it is also really cool. Yeah, it is really cool. Um, all right, and there's what kind of practical advice would you guys have for like the the guy like John who's laughing here who's never done, who's never done it before um, to get started in it? Because some people might see it, they see oh, there's all these fancy soaps, they look so expensive, all this stuff. Like, how can somebody get into it practically and see that it makes sense without them having to think that it's like some sort of chore that they have to get into? <laughs> Honestly, I say ease yourself into it rather than jump into it. So many people join these forums and they get overwhelmed because guys will literally post shaves of the day or SOTDs. Uh, it's what the soap they used that day was or the aftershave, the razor, the blade, because we all have more than just one. Um, and so like you get overwhelmed by this stuff. I say stay away from the forums in the beginning yeah. and just pick up some soap and a brush. Yeah. And then use the razor you're already using, the cartridges, you can still use it, but you're just slowly transitioning. Um, and, you know, the, the great thing about the brush, and I didn't mention this at the beginning, is it's, it's exfoliating. It's really great for your it's skin. Not, it's not a tool that, like, um, is like, uh, like a decoration. A lot of people think, like, oh, it's just an old-timey way. It's like, no, it's a, it's, it's a it very a functional tool. thing. Yeah. It is a tool. Yeah. And it does more than just apply lather on your face. It's exfoliating. As you're building lather on your face, it's really doing a great job for your skin. But also lifting up hairs, it, like Jordan mm-hmm. was saying, if you have ingrowns, it can actually really help dig out ingrowns. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's, so there's that. And that's one way to easily trans transition into it um but i lost my train of thought well i know that was exactly what i was going to say is that instead of switching up your entire routine replace the simplest thing which would be you can buy a ten dollar fifteen dollar puck of soap a twenty or thirty dollar brush and you're not in for that much that brush should last you literally your lifetime i use a brush from the 40s that is the original hair i mean mm-hmm. it's been kept up well so if you keep up a good brush it lasts forever and then a soap these big pucks of soap like Stuff Dog makes or other companies, they're going to last like probably nine months, a year. I mean, out, yeah. of, a, out of a dish of soap. So yeah, like, you don't need much soap on that brush. Yeah it's, yeah, it's it's actually a lot more economical, first off. And I would just switch with that, the soap and brush, just switch that up. Yeah, and you can yeah. build the soap, I mean, build the lather either in a bowl. Once you load the brush, you stick the brush on the puck, uh, turn it around for, I don't know, probably about 30 seconds. Once that brush is loaded... You can put it over into a bowl and add water as you need it to build up a lather, or you can just build lather on your face. And Which I, is what I do. And I do as well. I think it's yeah. the way to do it. I mean, it's really exfoliating, uh, great for the skin. So, like, that whole sensitive skin, sensitive skin, it goes away once you start, like, exfoliating your skin daily by default, by just applying lather. The number one thing people say when they get into this is their complexion looks better. Mm-hmm. 
yeah. is that their just their skin looks healthier and and that's the number one thing. Yeah. yeah. And there's just so many toys. It's like tricking out like a, an old VW bug with aftermarket parts. There's so many toys. Like <laughs> in the, the bowl, I said you could create lather in a bowl. You could use a bowl. You could also use a, la- uh, a lather scuttle. Which is a yeah. hot. It creates hot oh, yeah. lather. It's hot water. I just tried that dust. out. The one you sent me. That was really cool. I like. And that was uh, the first time I ever used, done it like in a bowl that way. Because normally I just did it on my magic. face. But it was it's nice magic. to be able to have Nothing warm like lather. Nothing like hot lather for an entire shave. Whereas you're used to using goo in a can, which is loaded with propellants, just to get the goo out of the can, which is not good for your skin. It dries I'm pretty, up. I'm pretty sure it actually dulls the blade faster on the cartridge razor too. These propellants they put in there. Plus, it's you're throwing it in the landfill. It smells like deodorant. Like you literally smell like you're putting deodorant. <laughs> on your face like wouldn't you much rather smell like something's like pleasant like cedar or sandalwood or cotton bacon? candy you know i mean i know I, but yeah Watermelon. so i just so there's this like you know there's there's the money saving part there's the eco- ecological part where like you're keeping stuff out of the landfill these propellant cans these cartridge razors all this plastic and the stuff you just really don't need at the end of the day um it's just you know it we were sold a lie, is what it all comes down to. Well, we were sold a, a... Oh, wait, I'm supposed to be telling you how do you can start doing this, right? <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> damn the man. But yeah, no, I would just start with a brush and soap there and ease yourself into it. Or you could just get one safety razor. But remember, if you do pick up a safety razor, it's best to pick up a sample pack of DE blades. Because like smoking and drinking, you're going to need to find a brand that works for you. <laughs> and that's a, a really cool thing about uh, shaving with a safety razor is now you can finally customize the shape to your face. It's not one size fits all. You don't have to use the Mac, Mac whatever that everyone else is using because your skin is different than everyone else's and your face is different than everyone else else's. So you need to find the right razor for you, the right blade. So I would start experimenting with a blade sampler pack first and uh, use hang with each blade about four or five shades you'll probably get out of it. Maybe more, maybe less, depending on your skin and your hair type. Uh, and eventually, you'll find one that really clicks with you and clicks yeah. with that razor. It's like it's like tennis shoes. I always tell people that you know they come in the store. They're like, "How can there really be that many differences? Isn't a blade a blade?" I'm like, "Well, isn't a shoe a shoe?" Or oh, like, "Car a car?" Or? Yeah, like, or have you found out that you just really like Adidas shoes or Nikes? And if you put on a different brand, like your feet hurt. Well, it's the <laughs> same thing. If you you find a blade that you know works with you, you're gonna now like freaking enjoy shaving instead of it being a miserable experience plus you're going to spend 10 bucks for 100 blades yeah. rather than 20 for four <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. i know that's that's the that's yeah. the insane thing and for me i'm on a i don't shave every day i know that's sac- probably sacrilege and <laughs> oh, i think every other day is actually ideal can you yeah. see how unshaven i am right now yeah, going, well, I'd, i want to shave before <laughs> before church on sunday but i uh, yeah that's for me it's uh, i i maybe do it two three times a week so so a pack of 100 blades will last me like a couple of years. It's right. insane. And I mean, like you, like Doug said, you can literally spend 10, 15, 20 dollars on 100 blades. And it's so it's I mean, number one, you're saving money. So a lot of these guys, they don't feel bad if they want to buy that seventy five dollar razor or that one hundred fifty dollar badger brush because they're like, I'm literally saving tons of money already after the first couple months or whatever. Yeah. And wives yeah. and girlfriends that are listening, there are worst where there are worse things your man could be spending money on. Yeah, like, you know, that's he wants to smell good. He what wants, a bastard. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to smell good and like enjoy grooming himself. Like I also think speaking of the art of manliness, like we weren't know, speaking of the art of manliness. Well, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> like I said this at the Big Shave Last it was probably in that video. Like I really I hate this this notion that today the guys are supposed to be like cavemen and are just supposed to kind of like roll out of bed, scratch themselves and find them, you know, find themselves at work magically and, and disheveled. And like, why can't we be like men that take pride in the way they look and, yeah. you know, take pride in the way that they dress themselves and present themselves to the world. And you see women, women do it. They, they have no apologies about doing it. Women will spend 30 minutes getting ready. I'm not saying you should spend 30 minutes shaving necessarily. I can do a shave in, you know, seven or 10 minutes, but Shouldn't you enjoy that? And shouldn't it be like a part of like feeling good about yourself and not just uh, well, well, yeah, you only feel as good as you look sometimes. I mean, as shallow as that sounds, we all know that to be true. Yeah. And as for like the whole beard craze and whatnot, I really think that's a byproduct of the crappy cartridges. As like you, again, that whole as he's wearing a beard. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I think that is. Uh, but no, I really think that's a byproduct of like the cartridge raises fiasco. I mean, like everyone thinks they have sensitive skin now. They don't like to shave. It's a chore. So everyone started growing beards. Even Gillette, when they were uh, reporting uh, profit losses a couple of years back, they blamed 
tangent on the whole beard craze. I actually think they're smarter <laughs> than that, and they know that it probably is DE uh, safety razors popularity coming back. But as soon as they mentioned it, everyone stopped paying attention to it. Oh, yeah. So blame it on the beard craze, oh the beard fad and whatnot. Yeah. But I really think the beard fad is just a byproduct of. Uh, I'm sorry, beardos, that are listening to me out there, but I'm telling you, I really think this has a lot to do with it. Is the sensitivity, this false sensitivity that the cartridge razors has created. So how do you explain a man bun? I can't explain. I don't know for that. How do you explain the fake lumberjack? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Seriously. Like, That's when funny. did this become a theme? Like, I visit my, and I'm sorry, guys, if you're listening, my cousin's out in Orange County, California. I go out there, they're all wearing flannel, and they all got the big beards. I'm just like, yes. what are you guys doing? Like, <laughs> shopping wood. <laughs> They're, and they're playing Nintendo Wii or wh- right. whatever it is. Yeah. It looks like the fucking Ronnie man. Does Wii yeah. make a shopping Wii? <laughs> <That's shopping right. laughs> yeah, that's hilarious. Well, okay. I've got a question for Matt. Historically, uh, did a shave and a haircut actually cost two bits? <laughs> Uh, that is a very good question. I think it I, yeah. I, I, I can't actually empirically say one way or the other, but I do believe that was a thing. I think it was around the Revolutionary War. And actually, just recently, I read a random fact, totally random. I read a fact that you during just the, me. I, I did touch uh, yeah. me. Oh. <laughs> during the Vietnam War, there was one way if you were a prisoner of war, if you wanted to find out the guy next to you was either also an American or maybe was a spy, they would knock, they'd go, and they'd wait for the other two knocks back to find, because only Americans apparently know this thing about shaving a hair. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I couldn't myself, I'm like, really? Like, after a while, they wouldn't figure it out? This stupid <laughs> Yeah, no, that's dumb. I don't believe that to be true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, that's hilarious. That's interesting. I, yeah, I don't really know the answer. But I know that they did <laughs> charge, me. like, back in the day, barbers, in between uh, paying customers, would uh, shape, uh, shape the homeless, uh, dot com. No, they would, like, <laughs> dump. <laughs> so they'd get off the train. They would go into the barbershops and sweep up the hair. They'd clean up for the, uh, the barbers, and they would give them a quick shave. And So I, I do you know what the – okay, for not for you, for the audience, okay. the, the other guys here – the red and the blue spiral on the barber pole. Well, it was originally red and white. I'm sorry, go on. Do you guys know what this is? Anyone? Yeah, I think, I think, I think it's heard about uh, this. blue for the water, white for the shaving cream, and red for the blood. Okay, okay, okay. Let's go with the next guy. Uh, let's go with Dylan. What do you think? John, I, I, I always, I always thought it was. I always thought it was. Uh, wasn't was it like I, I always thought it was red and white, and it was because of leeches, right? Okay. Because they okay. barbers okay. used to bleed. Uh, customers as well for okay. some, some a lot closer here. I, I thought i heard that barbers were actually surgeons or something and that was like a surgical symbol or something arteries and veins you are right there john well okay that's interesting that's the north american take on it in, in england it was red and white and it had to do with the blood as well but what they used to do is they used to sop up the blood during surgery and so on and so forth they'd have to wash out these cloths rinse them out and they would put them on a, like a, um, a fence out front, the, the cloth to dry. And so there'd still be blood on it and, re- and the wind would blow it. So that's what a barber, a British barber told me. Interesting. But I, it I, does represent yeah, blood yeah, because they were doing certain There's some conflicting yeah, stories here, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, middle, middle-aged we're barber. What was the Saturday Night Live skit with uh, Steve Martin? And uh, It all comes back to Steve Martin at the end of the day. <laughs> it does. Cool that, well, folks. I'm telling you. It's okay. <laughs> Well, um, so the Big Shave West this year, what can people expect? What, what, uh, you know, what somebody who's listening to this now, it's basically going to happen this weekend. So, um, yeah. somebody who's listening that lives in the greater Los Angeles area and can make it, what, what, do, what do they need to know? They need to go to Old Shave, what is it? Uh, Big Shave, thebigshavewest.com. Uh, to find out more about it. But, I mean, it really is – it's going to be an all-out wet shaving expo. There's going to be demos there. We're going to be filming a live I'd Lather to Be Shaving. Um, there's going to be a Wet Shavers Roundtable, which is uh, another show I do, uh, wetshaversroundtable.com. But um, it's going to be a live panel discussion. In fact, you're going to be part of it, Joel. Yes, yes. I'm That's looking right. forward to it. Um, well, I- outside of all this <laughs> plugging that Doug is doing, <laughs> I, I would say the number one thing people should expect to, to feel welcomed. Like that's the number one thing about this hobby that I've seen time and time again is that you do not feel like you're the, the novice when you walk in. Oh, not at all. People are extremely, it's not like, yeah, some communities are really closed off. Like 
you know, if you if you try to get into like golf or something, like you feel like an asshole if you're on the golf course, and someone's like, <laughs> "You got the wrong club there, sir." <laughs> yeah, sir, you're not wearing pants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. They're like, <laughs> I've been there. the shaving community is so much more open and welcoming and fun. So if you are someone who has no idea about this, you're going to be at home. If you're someone who's been doing it for ten years, you're going to be at home as well. So. Come have a fun time. Yeah, we're really just stoked to talk to anyone about it because not many people want to listen to us. Please. It's like, how do you know there's a wet shaver at the party? They tell you. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's like that's. I feel like that also works for vegans. Yes, um, and <laughs> bass players. I think it's always the bass player or the drummer or something. All right. <laughs> and where can people find you if they want to get your products or, or services? RazorEmporium.com <laughs> or PhoenixShaving.com. And uh, also check it, uh, us out uh, every Friday morning. We do it with our live, oh no, it's not live, our weekly wet shaving morning show. Called I'd rather be shaving. I'd rather be shaving. On YouTube. I'd rather be shaving.com. We'll take you. It's a lot of this. It's like a lot of back and forth, and there's some history, and there's challenges and games. Oh, yeah. We do some like devil, double dare type stuff. It's, yeah, it's fun. Usually at my expense, too. <laughs> I do. Well, but that's all. <laughs> well, that's awesome, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming on, and I'm looking forward to the event, and we'll have to have you guys back on in the future. Anytime. Oh, definitely. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you so much, Thank you, Donovan. Well, that was, uh, you know, a, a delightful interview with those guys. I'm looking forward to hanging out with them tomorrow. I think it'll be fun. Yeah, it's going to be cool. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think it's going to be pretty neat. And um, thank you, listeners, for... Um, tuning in every week and by tuning in i mean uh um, just clicking the button on your phone because nobody tunes in anything anymore um but um way to alienate our uh, <laughs> our greatest generation listeners <laughs> sorry out there greatest generation who's listening to us on your uh zenith radio yeah <laughs> how do i get it on my uh stereo mm, um, this, this is not going well for uh, grandma <laughs> <laughs> um and yeah, we thank you for your support. Um, if you anything that you uh, want to get a hold of that we talk about in the show, uh, go to our website, gentlemanscofflaw.com, and there are links in the show notes. There you could also find all the links to all of our social media, uh, where to follow us, and a contact page for anything you want to send us. Um, also, we just launched uh, last week a Patreon page. So yeah. if you're a fan of the show and uh, you could spare a buck, or two an episode and want to support it. You go on there. <laughs> you could go on there. You could uh, uh, you know pick your tier and uh, support the show. Look at all the different uh, uh, what do you call it perks? Perks. All the perks, perks we have on there. Um, and this week for our listeners on Instagram, we're having a giveaway, and it's a collaboration with Edwin Jagger, the maker of uh, safety razors and fine uh, shaving accoutrements. Ooh. Um, for the for the big shave west since that's this weekend you could go on instagram so it's the instagram is this username uh gent scofflaw if you go there there'll be a post and you could find out about how to enter that contest to win uh you know some stuff from edwin jagger and we might throw a little bit of swag in there and next week we'll be joined by uh john david cole of the country squire and uh his uh pretty popular podcast Popcast podcast, Country Squire Radio, and he's a tobacconist extraordinaire. Some people call him the tobacco Jesus. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know if that's blasphemous or not, but I think... Well, I mean, if he has 12 disciples and he walks around everywhere, then, you know, whatever. <laughs> I think the rule of thumb is if it's funny, it's not blasphemous. <laughs> that that sounds about that right. That makes sense. That makes sense. I think God will give us a pass on that one. Well, thank you guys uh, for joining this week. And uh, you are a gentleman in a scofflaw, my friend. And you are a gentleman in a scofflaw. Take care, Dylan. Take okay. care, Jordan. You have. You guys have. <laughs> oh yeah. A great weekend, and we'll see you next week. This has been the Gentleman Scofflaw Podcast. Follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcatcher. Visit us on the interwebs at gentlemanscofflaw.com. Captain says his ass on the river. We ain't getting home if we don't break through. So damn cold, I can't help but shiver. Rise and shine, we got work to do. Hey! Shiva!
forever.